Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Analyzing Eclipse Applications with Trace Compass. My name is uh, Marc-André Lapel. It's my first time here at EclipseCon, so I'm really excited to be here with you today. Um, a little bit about me. I'm a software developer at Ericsson since uh, 2013. Uh, I worked in uh, different uh, development uh, positions before that. Um, I'm an Eclipse committer on the CDT project, uh, Trace Compass, and uh, Linux tools. And I also occasionally contribute to uh, a bunch of other projects. So I'm very interested in all sorts of projects at uh, Eclipse. Um, what we're going to talk about today, uh, first we're just going to uh, talk about what's uh, tracing. And um, then we're going to go over a brief overview of Trace Compass. So I apologize if you've already uh, seen the overview uh, of the CDT day. It's going to be a bit familiar. But uh, after that, we're going to. Uh, look at an example of uh, um, an issue that we fixed using Trace Compass um, to fix Trace Compass. Um, so I hope uh, you'll enjoy that example. And uh, I'm going to go a bit uh, into more detail about the different integration that uh, come out of the box uh, in Trace Compass. And then we can uh, maybe uh, do a bit of questions and answers. So, oops. What is tracing? So tracing, it, uh, it's about recording information about uh, your program that's executing. Uh, typically, you want to uh, record a lot of information if, uh, if you have uh, difficult problems to solve. Uh, so it can be useful for all kinds of troubleshooting and debugging and uh, maybe just understanding a system that you're new to. Um, it can be done in different ways. Uh, it can be static instrumentation, dynamic instrumentation. Uh, it can be activated at runtime or at compile time. Uh, there are many ways to do it. Um, uh, there are different uh, use cases. Uh, most of the time, you're gonna look at, uh, you're gonna try to uh, find the cause of different problems, uh, like crashes, concurrency issues, uh, performance issues, and you can also use uh, tracing to do some live monitoring, um, so you can detect uh, uh, problems. Like uh, if you go um, over uh, limits um, for resources and, and things like that, overload protection. Um, and it's also uh, useful if you want to do uh, system-wide troubleshooting. So you can have many different components, many different uh, systems, many nodes, uh, even across layers. You can all gather information from all of those things and then uh, put them together to, uh, to understand the problem better. Uh, so the Trace Compass project, uh, it used to be uh, a component part of the Linux tools uh, project. Uh, the component was called LTTNG. Uh, that was the initial integration that we did for tracing. Uh, but now um, Trace Compass, it's its own project because um, uh, the scope of the project is much bigger now. Um, it's not just about Linux and it's not just about LTTNG. Uh, it has many integration, it works on different platforms. Um, and also to increase collaboration, we have uh, decided to make a, a new project for that. And uh, I put uh, the address here. And at the end, there are all, also uh, references with uh, other links. Um, so Trace Compass, it's a framework uh, to build trace vis visualization and analysis tools. And it also comes out of the box with uh, some visualizations for formats we, we already, already support. And what's, uh, what's very good about this, uh, this uh, project is it's very scalable. You can have many, many gigabytes of, um, of traces loaded into uh, Eclipse. And it still runs uh, very fast. And it, it won't exceed the, uh, your heap and crash. Um, it's very extensible. Um, so the user don't, uh, doesn't necessarily have uh, uh, to, to write Java code. You can define. Uh, your own formats just using the, the UI. Uh, if you write XML too, you can do that. And you can also, uh, we also support uh, reading binary formats. Uh, typically, you'll want to do that with, uh, with some Java code. Um, but that's all there for you uh, as a framework. And we have many reusable views and a widget that you can compose together to form your own analysis and visualizing tools. And uh, it's available as a standalone application. application. So if you don't want to, all the clutter from, from Eclipse, you can uh, have that uh, standalone and with a simplified menu and it, 
it's a better experience for some people. And you can also install it as a, a set of, uh, of plugins um, inside Eclipse. Um, so uh, this is just an idea of uh, what Trace Compass looks like. Uh, here we're showing uh, different views. Um, the central view is uh, the events table. So the way we, we look at traces in Trace Compass, we, uh, we see traces as um, a series of events over time. Uh, and an event will typically have a timestamp and a payload that goes with it. So the payload can be different fields and uh, messages uh, for that timestamp. So the events table um, just displays that, that raw data. Um, so on the left side, uh, maybe you don't see it quite well, but those are timestamps. And then uh, right next to it, it's all the different fields and different columns. Uh, so then you can use that to uh, navigate, search, and things like that. And then here at the top, you have a, an example of a, a call stack view. So here you can look at uh, function calls over time. Uh, here there are many, many functions, so you don't see the, the full names of the function, but you can zoom in and look at, at, at it in detail. Uh, at the bottom, you have the histogram view. Uh, that displays the event, event uh, density over time. So you can see here at the beginning that uh, at the beginning of the trace, there were a lot of events. And then there's a pause here. Uh, maybe the, it was the application that paused or the tracer. Maybe we stopped the, the tracing session or something, and then later it, it starts again. Um, uh, there are other views like the sequence diagram view here. Um, uh, we, um, as we analyze the different events, we convert them to a model to be displayed in the sequence diagram. And that can be extended if you have a different format, you can define your own model, or you can reuse the model that's, that's there out of the box as long as you, you have the same names and same uh, text. Um, it will do that for you. Um, there's the control view in the corner. Uh, that's to um, create your session, uh, enable events, and uh, stop the session uh, while you're collecting data. Um, you can also connect to multiple nodes and control all of them from there. Um, and here in the middle, it's a, it's a bit small, but uh, it's a view called the ball game view. That's a very application-specific view that we made as an example. Um, this view was generated just by writing XML. I'll explain a bit that, uh, of that later. Um, but you can see it's displaying some states over time. And this is one of the powerful features of uh, Trace Compass. So some of the common features, um, we have a, a management of trace. So it's a, it's a bit like a management of, of, of files, but specifically for traces. Uh, so you can uh, open a trace, import several traces at once. Uh, you can organize them into folders. Um, and you can also do um, more interesting things like uh, importing and exporting a trace package. Um, a trace package is um, basically you have uh, your trace files, so uh, logs or binary formats, and also extra files that were generated by Trace Compass uh, during analysis. We call them supplementary files. Um, so if you want to share stuff with a colleague, then this will all be pre-processed and open right away in Trace Compass. And you can also share bookmarks. Um, so one thing that I haven't shown in the table uh, is that you can add bookmarks just as like uh, you would in a regular Eclipse editor. So if you see, uh, oh, I think this, there's a problem here, you can add a bookmark, uh, send everything to a colleague, attach it to a bug report. And, uh, that's very useful. So uh, a bit more detail about the events table. Um, as I explained, you can see all the different fields and there's a search bar. Uh, so we can quickly go through what's interesting for you. And uh, you can also use that bar to filter things uh, and hide everything you don't want to see um, and add bookmarks. And uh, it, it's the central view. Um, I mean it in a way that uh, it's implemented as a Eclipse editor. So it's always, most of the time, it's uh, near the center of the attention. So as I said, you can search, uh, filter, and uh, I forgot, you can also uh, highlight in different colors. Um, so maybe you're looking at some network traces, you want to see uh, what's coming in as uh, red and what's coming out uh, as green, for example. So it can quickly help you find things. Um, I already showed the bookmarks, but um, what's interesting is that it shared the same bookmark view as um, anything in Eclipse. So if you have uh, some uh, C projects, Java projects with bookmarks, everything is all in the same place. You can also uh, see your trace bookmarks and navigate to them. 
a uh, little bit more about the sequence diagram. Um, so uh, I explained it briefly, but all the events that we analyze um, gets um, converted into a model to be displayed here. Uh, so you can reuse that model as long as the events has the same string and same fields. Uh, or you can use uh, a regular extension, a plugin extension, to define your own model, uh, adapt it to your own format. Uh, so that can be very useful for certain uh, applications. Um, a lot of views in, uh, in uh, Trace Compass uh, depend on a component called the state system. Um, so the state system is made out of um, a few components. Um, basically, the, the goal is that we want to display uh, some states over time. Um, so it, the, the example we have here is uh, the state of our process. Uh, so it starts in a waiting state. And then um, as we analyze the trace events, we see uh, sketch switch events. So uh, we can deduce, OK, this, is now, this process is now in user mode. And then later we have a RRQ entry, so now it's interrupted. And so it, it can be a, a nice way to visualize what's going on in your system. Uh, so to achieve that, there are different things we need. Uh, we need an event source. So uh, if you have um, a text trace uh, or a binary format, uh, you'll need to parse it. So that's the event source. And then uh, to convert those events into states, uh, we define an event handler. Uh, so there are many ways to do this. Uh, the, there are two ways to do this. Um, you can write a Java file to say, okay, this event corresponds to this state, or you can write XML, which I'll show a bit later. Um, and every, every state changes over time, gets stored in the, what we call the state history. Um, the state history is also saved on disk, so it doesn't take more memory, and it's very fast to, to, um, to query it. Um, and then you have the, uh, the, um, the UI, so a view could query that system to display the states in a nice way here. So I'm going to go come back a few times to this diagram um, as I explain the example. So um, uh, one example of a view that's based on the state system is the control flow view. Um, this is using... Uh, kernel information, Linux kernel information, uh, to display all of the processes state over time. Um, so you can see they have uh, different colors. So you can see uh, green is user mode. You have uh, wait for CPU and things like that. And on the left side, you see the name of the processes. Um, and on the right side, you have, of course, the, the states. And uh, you can maybe see the little vertical bars here. And this is uh, where the CPU is going. So if you want to follow what a uh, specific CPU is doing, you can follow the arrows. And there are a um, few buttons to help you navigate through that. So you can follow a CPU. You can go to the next event and things like that, zoom in, zoom out. And this is all part of the framework. So if you want your custom um, view that looks like a Gantt chart like that, you can all get that for free. Another similar looking view is the resources view. Um, uh, this one focuses, uh, has um, the hardware point of view. So you see your CPUs, your RRQs, and you see their states over time. So here, for example, you see that CPU 0 is uh, busy in a system call. Um, so yeah, if you're doing maybe more embedded development, that could be a view that you look more at. Um, and yeah, it's sharing the same, uh, the same functionality as the control flow view. Um, that view is also uh, using the state system, but displaying data in a different way. Um, this is the CPU usage, and it displays um, CPU load over, uh, percentage over time. Um, and on this side, you, you see uh, uh, that the CPU load at the beginning was very high, uh, probably 400%, so because we have many cores in the system. And then uh, it decreases over time. And on the right side, uh, you see the, the name of the processes, and they are actually uh, the thread, so you can have many threads for processes there. And then you can click on a thread and then see uh, on a graph what, uh, what this thread contributes to the CPU load. Um, and here you can still uh, zoom in and navigate and do all these kind of things. This is one I showed a bit uh, uh, before, um, the call stack view. So it's the function calls over time, and it's still sharing the same buttons that you've seen a few times. Uh, to navigate, you can zoom in. Here we selected 
uh, a time range. So we can also, it, uh, this is useful because when you select a time range, it synchronizes all the other views and you can look at uh, the, the information on the other views as well. Uh, one thing I talked a bit uh, about is how you can um, define a lot of things in XML without writing code. Um, so one of the example of that is if you have a text log that's very specific to your application, uh, it can be any kind of application, like an Eclipse application that's writing uh, to standard output. Uh, you can use a wizard to uh, generate a parser uh, based on simple regular expressions. Um, so we call them the custom text and XML parser because it handles both uh, regular text logs or XML uh, logs. Um, so you'll define um, regular expressions per line uh, for a, a text log and you're in the case of a XML parser, you're gonna define uh, elements, um, elements that you're interested in uh, for your fields in the, in the trace and uh, also what's, what's the timestamp in the line and things like that. Uh, so that part, uh, if you remember the diagram, correspond more to the event source. That's how we get events out of the, out of the trace. And then we'll be able to pass that on uh, to the event handler to generate the states. So to generate the states, um, uh, you can also write XML to do that. Um, so uh, we're gonna basically instead of writing a Java code, uh, if this string go to that state, uh, we can do that ex in XML. It's a bit of a similar logic, but what's nice is that any user can just load an XML, share it, and they don't need to install new plugins, uninstall plugins. Um, and this is a bit nicer because it can be uh, uh, generated by other tools eventually. And uh, another part of, the, of this is uh, the view itself. And the view can also be done in XML in a very uh, small number of lines. Um, I'm gonna show you an example. So that's the, the, the one I showed before, the ball game view. And this is just 50 lines of uh, XML, including comments. Um, so it's pretty short to generate a fully functional view and you get a lot of things for free and you display uh, your states in different colors over time. So basically this XML is just saying, I want a Gantt chart, which we call a time chart view. And uh, it's just assigning colors to different uh, state names. And eventually, you'll be able to generate uh, those XML files uh, using a, a, a state machine uh, editor. Um, so this is, uh, this is in the works, and we hope that uh, we'll be able to use that to simplify even further the generation of those views and those, uh, those state systems. So next, I want to show you uh, an example of a problem that we had in Trace Compass and uh, how uh, we, um, how we use the state system and the views to find a problem. And this was, this problem we found completely by accident just by looking at, uh, at our traces. So this is a, a good example. Um, so we just need a little bit of background. Um, the way Trace, Trace Compass um, uh, retrieves data from events, it's, uh, it's by sending event requests. Uh, so we have an event requester, so it can be a view that's interested in displaying some information from events. So we can call it the events requester. It sends a request to the, to the, the trace, the event source. Um, so it can request many events at a time. Uh, and then uh, once the trace source is done parsing uh, the events, then it sends the events back. But what we noticed is then when you had many concurrent requests, sometimes you didn't get data back. So that's really bad because then the views can stop drawing and, and the analysis can stop and yeah, so this is, this is our problem. Especially if you have many views open at the same time, then this is probably gonna happen pretty often. Um, but thankfully, thankfully the Trace Compass code already has uh, some, some logging uh, there to help us. So every time, uh, for example, every time we, we create an event request to get some data, uh, we already logged the fact that, the fact that oh, a, a request was created, here's uh, his unique ID, and extra information. 
um, and then we enable it just with the regular uh, tracing um, tracing uh, facilities of Eclipse. Uh, so that's just in the, the launch configuration. We enable logging uh, tracing of requests, and then it outputs to the console something a bit scriptic, like uh, there's a timestamp in there, some fields, uh, the fact that it was created, the start time, things like that. So that's that's not very nice to look at. Uh, so it would be nice to make it a bit more digestible and then make it into a nice table that we can browse and we can search through, we can filter. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to define a custom text parser, which I showed a bit before. Um, so we generate a parser just by using uh, this wizard. Uh, so we have uh, four kinds of lines in this uh, log format and we define uh, some regular expressions. It looks a bit scary, but sometimes uh, those <laughs> expressions, they grow over time, so you know how it is. And uh, we define what the timestamp format uh, looks like in our uh, trace format. And then we define some other fields that are interesting to us. Uh, we have the thread ID, the type, and then the uh, request ID, which is uh, the unique ID of this, uh, this uh, event request. Um, yeah, so once we have that, that means we have an event source. We can get data from our text file um, and then present it nicely in the table. But it would be nicer to actually look at um, in what states the event requests are because you can map them to states. So first the event request gets created, then it, it's running, it's being serviced by the, the, the trace source, and then it, it completes. It's pretty simple, but it can be useful to troubleshoot. So what we need is convert the, the single events to states. So we need an event handler. But we can define that using an XML file. Um, so here, uh, we call that the state provider. Uh, so um, we declare state provider. And we have a trace type ID that's just to differ differentiate different trace formats. And um, we give it an, a, a name for users. And then we define uh, the name of our states. So first, it gets created. It can be coalesced for performance, uh, and then it can get suspended, running, and then completed. So that's just defining the names of, of the, the states. And then the interesting part is where we define the conditions. Um, so, so this condition here is, is looking at, at the text and saying, OK, if my message has created in it, then I'm in the created states. So that's pretty straightforward. It's almost a one-to-one -one, um, text to the name of, a, of the state. And then we store that in the state system. The way it's stored in, in the state system is a bit like a, like a tree. So it looks like a, a path and like a Unix path. So, um, and then here you have a request and then the unique ID of the requests. Uh, so every request will have a different number here. And then the current state it is in. So we have two things done already without writing Java code. Um, the only thing we're missing is a way to view that. But we can write a little bit of XML and we'll be able to view our data. Um, so first we say, okay, we want a time graph view because we have two different kind of views you can define in XML. Um, and then we can give it the name for the user. And then you just say, the state uh, created, I want it in this color, and the other state, I want it in a different color. So it's just a mapping of colors. It's really simple. Um, and then you just tell it to, um, to find those values in the state system, which is the tree-like structure I talked about. Um, so in just 15 lines, we define complete view. So it looks like this. Um, you can see different requests. We have uh, six different requests uh, that are displayed here, and you can see uh, their states over time. Um, so you can see uh, where I'm hovering here that uh, my, my request uh, has been created, and eventually it gets completed. And then you get all the buttons for free. Um, so it's very nice, but it's not useful yet. Like we don't, it's not clear where the problem is, how to fix the bug, um, or where the bug is. Um, so we can go a little bit further. Uh, we can add some validations to, uh, to how the states are defined. So we can add a bit of condition to tell it it's only valid to be in a created state, state if you were not in any state before, right? 
So the only thing I'm adding here is I want to make sure that you're in a null state when you go in the created state. And I do that for all, all states. Right? It doesn't make sense to, to go from nothing to running. It has to be created first. So I define those extra conditions. Else, that means we're in a bad state. Something really bad happens. And then I just assign it a bad color like red because red is, is bad. And then and after not much uh, things uh, changed, we can see, wow, there's red in there. So something suspicious is going on. Why is, for example, uh, event request number zero going bad? So that means for this, for this request, we ask some data and it never came back. Um, so we can click here and then it synchronizes all the other views, including the events table. So we can see a little bit more detail. Here we can see that the event request number zero was created twice. It doesn't make sense that something gets created twice. Usually it gets created once. Um, or uh, it, is it possible that maybe two different ones had the same ID? That would be kind of bad. It's supposed to be a unique ID. So we can go look a bit closer at the code now. Um, so we're leaving Trace Compass. Now we're going to JDT in this example. Uh, so when we look at the constructor, um, we see that the way uh, it's uh, assigning the, the unique request ID is not safe because uh, this request number is static. So if two threads are entering this code, then it's very possible that request ID will be the same. So this is, this is the bug. How do we fix this? Just a simple synchronize, but it was pretty hard to, to find that there was a problem there. And yeah, the bug gets fixed now. So there's no more bugs in Trace Compass. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I just want to go over a, a few of the integrations that are out of the box, because what I showed you, we basically created our own integration for a specific application. But it can be any application. Eclipse application, C application, any kind of things. Um, so out of the box, we have support for uh, LTT and G-Traces, which is the Linux tracing tool next generation uh, <laughs> tracer. Uh, it has uh, different domains, like a user space um, domain and a kernel. And I showed you a few views uh, in the kernel domain, like control full view and CPU usage. Uh, we have a pretty good support for text logs uh, using the custom parsers, like I showed you. you you can generate your own parser pretty easily. And um, it's actually pretty easy. Once you have a few uh, done, you can reuse some things and it's, it's pretty quick. Um, we have a generic support for custom trace format, which is the same format as LTTNG, but you can have application outputting that without being LTTNG. You can have hardware writing to that format directly, have bare metal systems also doing that. Um, we have a support for packet capture. Um, which uh, you might know from uh, Wireshark. We don't, have, uh, we don't support all protocols, but uh, we have a few ones. I'll, I'll talk a bit more in detail about that. And we have uh, support for BTF, which is the best trace format, uh, no less. <laughs> um, uh, we have uh, also support for the GDB trace points, which uh, we showed a bit at the CDT day. So a bit more into detail, um, the LTTNG Eclipse uh, Integration uh, is our reference implementation. It's uh, the biggest one. It's the first one, too, that we made. So it's a good example of uh, how to plug in uh, your own things into Eclipse, uh, into Trace Compass. Um, it has uh, many built-in analyses and uh, views, the, some of the views I showed already. And um, you can uh, do a kernel, uh, kernel space and user space um, uh, visualization. Uh, one big component that I briefly mentioned is the, the control view, which allows you to connect to the LTTNG tracer on remote system locally, um, and then create your session, enable events, and a lot of things, all from within Eclipse. Um, this is just a screenshot of what it looks like. So here you can see uh, both the control flow view, the resources view, uh, and the control view. Um, I've explained uh, already a bit uh, how they work, but here it's really uh, an example of how you can be focused on, on one domain. Um, the packet capture um, integration, um, um, uh, it supports uh, different protocols like uh, 
Ethernet, IPv4, TCP, and UDP. And uh, we hope that uh, more will come eventually. Um, and there's also the stream analysis, which uh, is uh, the conversations you can also see in Wireshark. Um, the value in that is not necessarily to replace Wireshark. It's uh, because it's very useful if you want to correlate that information with other traces, which Fast Compass uh, does pretty well. So you can see all your data uh, in the same table, um, all synchronized in, in different times. Um, so it can be useful to be able to look at network traces at the same time. And this is what it looks like. You have the typical events table that we've shown already. And then at the bottom, you can look at different layers, uh, Ethernet, IPv4, TCP. Uh, look, this part looks a little bit like Wireshark. And then you can see your conversation, uh, conversations at the, at the bottom. Um, and then I, I showed it a bit at the CDT day. Um, it's the GDB trace point analysis. So this is, this is a little bit of a special one because it talks to GDB. So that's, uh, I think that's the only one that we have that actually it's talking to an external process. Everything else is done in Java. Um, so it, that one is nice because you can see all your data uh, from GDB in the table and it helps, helps you navigate to, to, um, through data using the trace compass um, features. And then it integrates with CDT, so you can see the values of the variables and, and your call stack and things like that. Um, so this is one is a good example of how the two projects can work together. Um, we have a lot of collaborations. Uh, we have something called the Trace Research Project. So that works um, on the um, analysis, uh, visualization, and also the tracing side. Um, we have good collaboration with uh, Ecole Polytechnique de Montréal and uh, Concordia universities and, and other ones. Um, and then in the industry, we, of course, there's Ericsson and uh, there's uh, Fishy OS, which is uh, people responsible for the LTTNG tracer. So we have very good collaboration with them. Uh, we also collaborate with uh, government agencies and um, a few, uh, uh, those are just a few examples of contributors to Trace Compass, um, like Calray in France and CEA, and there are many more um, also, um, and we're very excited about uh, new features uh, upcoming, like uh, the dependency analysis and critical path that will be even more powerful to, to find bottlenecks and across systems. It will be really, really interesting. And I put uh, several links for you. There's the project page. Um, there's a mailing list. Um, we have uh, is Trace Compass fast yet, which is uh, how we track performance regression uh, using the, the Eclipse test performance framework. Um, there's LTTNG website, and we also have uh, we're also part of several working groups like uh, Polarsys, Diamond, and we have a summit for tracing that we always go. If you're interested, it's a really good place to discuss tracing and some documentation. If you have any questions and answers, I'd be happy to.